Hey everybody, welcome back to JDM World. Today, we're gonna to talk about the top five ways you can make your home theater better. I know there are a million different things that you can do, and everybody has a different opinion about which ones are the most important, but I think these are five things that you can do that will build upon each other and really take your theater, not just to the next level, but continuously to new level after level after level. I mean, these are pretty huge things that you can do to up your home theater game. Now, we filmed this live streaming, so there's gonna be some interaction from folks, and I've got Mike on with me, and we've got a guest, and you'll see all that stuff. So it's kind of a different format, and uh, we record these twice a week. So if you wanna get in on any of these questions, uh, make sure to check below, look for when we have these scheduled, and you too can participate in future videos. Make sure to like and subscribe, drop some comments below, let me know what you think, and with that, we'll go ahead and get right into the video. Um, but uh, yeah, so one of the most common upgrades that people perform to really improve their theater experience is to add a sub, right? So if you're if you're not running a sub yet in your theater, that that is one of the most impactful things that you can do. But uh, when you run one subwoofer, uh, you run into all kinds of problems, right? So room modes will eat you up, and what that means for the folks that are not initiated into subwoofer tuning yet, and you will be if you're listening to this, um, is, is that in certain areas of the room, your bass will be louder than other areas. So you get these nulls, right? So where you get reflections and cancellation of sound, all these things kind of work together to make things not loud as you want them to be evenly across your listening positions. And the most common way that people combat that is to use multiple subwoofers positioned around the room more than one subwoofer will help you create a consistent bass experience across your listening uh, positions, right? So you got a big sofa or two rows of seats or something. Uh, one sub is going to be really, really hard uh, to to really make give you a consistent experience. Um, all right. So yes, multiple subwoofers, yes. REW, get a U mic one and a mini DSP two by four HD, tune that stuff up, and that will vastly improve. Uh, your experience uh, for a number of people in your room. So that's that's number one. All right, moving on to number two. Number two, second thing you can do to improve your home theater is moving away from an AVR to separates. And if you're not familiar what that is, separates is when you take, so just imagine you've got an AVR, right? Just any of the normal kind of uh, consumer commercial kind of things, you know, like the, like a uh, a Dinon or Marantz or Yamaha or an Ankyo or, you know, they're all kind of the same, right? Um, and inside of this box, you've got all your HDMI crap, right? And then all your amplifiers, they're just jammed in this one box. And it limits your ability to change your amplification sometimes. Uh, if you uh, want to get new features, you have to buy everything over again. And then uh, there's a lot of talk these days, especially in the last week, of how the sound quality coming from a integrated uh, AVR, um, audio video receiver, that has amplification and all of your uh, HDMI matrix and all that stuff is lower. That you know, uh, I think you, you should Google this up because there's been a huge amount of talk about it, and just about every other YouTuber than me has dropped a video talking about the new Denon uh, 2020 AVRs that have pre-pro mode, right? Where you can turn off the amplification and just use it as a pre-pro uh, and not have all that circuitry running. Uh, so the idea is if you want to take that next step, you can buy separate amplification and a separate processor, right? Um, and uh, that will give you flexibility to, like I said, change your amplification down the line, upgrade your processor if you want to, although you should buy a processor that's upgradable. Strongly recommend that. Okay, so number three on how to improve your home theater will be adding Atmos to your system. So basically, um, for those of you that don't know what Atmos is, but I'm uh, going to assume that most of you do, but if whoever doesn't know what Atmos is, it's a it's basically surround sound for your ceiling. So as it's layman's terms. Um, I didn't know the advantages until uh, we added it here in the home theater at the house. And wow, like if if the movie is filmed and the, the digital track movie is, is is ready for this stuff, you can literally hear 
like let's say a plane is flying from point A to, to point B, you will hear the full spectrum of sound from point A to point D. And <clears throat> I think it's an advantage because you, you're just making your stuff sound better. You know, that's the basic way I could put it. Yeah, well, so this this kind of plays off of, you know, number two of going separates and upgrading your processor. A lot of people might not have a processor that's capable of doing Atmos. They might have like a 7.1 or a 5 dot processor that just doesn't have enough channels. But you can upgrade uh, to a to a discrete processor that'll do 16 channels or 13 channels or whatever you need. Um, and then you can get those those height. Well, they're not really heights. They're tops for the most part. Um, but uh, Atmos is by Dolby. And in your master audio tracks that you see on Blu-rays, uh, they'll have Dolby Atmos object information embedded in the soundtrack. And that will allow you to take advantage of those speakers in the ceiling. And it gives you more of a spherical effect of the sound, right? So you get the the sounds that can move around above you and then to the sides. <laughs> Speaker placement. Oh, right? okay. So that's if, what that if you, <laughs> if you think about what we're doing here, we're going through an upgrade cycle of things that you can do that build upon each other to give you a better sound. So, you know, buy your subs, get your separates, um, build your Atmos, but then you got to think about speaker placement. And if you're doing Atmos in particular, Dolby has a very prescriptive setup. And what I mean by prescriptive is they tell you what to do. They don't give you advice and say, you might want to do this. They say your speakers should be here in your room. So they're telling you what to do, just like a prescription from a doctor, right? Dr. Atmos. Um, and that Correct. I think is very key because if if your speakers are not located correctly, it's going to impact your soundstage all the way around and over the top in your environment, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, you don't want your speakers too far apart because just say if you have your fronts that are too close together, it kind of collapses that stereo image, especially if you listen to the music. So you need them spread apart. And then as you move around the room, um, you don't want those first sets of surrounds too far from the front. So as sounds pan from front to that first set of surrounds, it, you get a break there. It gets too soft and it doesn't work. So there, the speaker placement becomes very critical when you start moving into the larger multi-channel environments. So, I mean, it's always important. But once you get up to nine bed channels and six Atmos channels, if your speakers are not in the right location, you're going to have a lot of issues. Let me ask you a question, Giles. I, let's say you're dealing with someone with an apartment. A lot of people live in apartments. So what would you recommend to them for speaker placement if they're dealing with a very, very finite amount of space? If they're Because usually in a living room will hug the dining room and then the kitchen is kind of all one room. So I know yeah. like a lot of sound might escape through that through that thing. It's not a sealed like home theater. What would you recommend for someone like that? Would you recommend just doing two fronts, two rears? Like, what do you think? I would, in most cases, in a, in a, in a, in that size room with restrictions that I often see for apartments, just go 5.1. I wouldn't mm -hmm. even necessarily worry about the Atmos for that. If 5.1 experience is going to be a very nice experience, it's head and shoulders above just uh, you know, like a 2.1 or a 3.1 environment. You get those, that one, that one set of surround speakers will change your life if you don't now, have them right now. And <clears throat> remember, they don't go behind you in a 5.1, they go off to the sides and there's a prescriptive Dolby document that tells you how to set up 5.12. You did, that is a nice segue, though, into the final point, the final talking point, which is room treatments. <laughs> there we go. How do you know? How do you know? I can't even read my own, and you know how more you, than I do. How do you know our business? Yeah, like, <laughs> Jesus. This or is TV. weird. Yeah, or TV's like one-upping me right now. You just want to. She's you, gonna, you, you know what you. she's going to do? <laughs> she's going to take your job. Take your job. Bro. Uh, okay, so moving on. Yes, room treatments is our fifth option, our fifth pro tip for making your home theater better. And in my opinion, outside of your speaker choice, and I'll, I'll lump in, in your subwoofers there, Outside of those things, the thing that you can do that most people don't do that improves your sound the most is room treatments. And this is uh, diffusion, absorption, bass traps. And, you know, you might be like, oh, that doesn't make a difference. So it totally makes a difference. Think about a restaurant that you've gone to that you've eaten at. And uh, all you hear is the echo of a million different conversations that destroys your experience. And if you get any of that in your in your theater room, uh, it's bad times. So go in your room, 
give it some claps and listen to see if you can hear that echo. And if you can hear some echo, then you got a problem and uh, room treatments are going to make a huge difference. Now, okay, we so let's, uh, let's close out the general discussion for the video and then we can just do other stuff afterwards. Uh, but just to wrap up our agenda for the night, uh, the five top things that you can do to improve your home theater. We started out with multiple subs, multiple <laughs> subwoofers. Then we um, did separate. And we move on to move away from an AVR by a separate pre-pro processor and amplification, right? From there, we went to Atmos. add your Atmos. Am I right? Yep. Atmos. Yes. Yes. All right. There we go. I got to look at my notes. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm old now. I had to do this early. Dude, if, if you have any questions or teaching those are scheduled tit for tat, man. You know what? She's good at running people. Well, she will, She's coming on my show. I don't care. She will tell you what to do. Bring her on. Um, or and Atmos, you stay after the show because I need your email. After uh, <laughs> after Atmos comes the speaker placement, right? So mm -hmm. See how these build upon each other, right? Get Get those subs. Get those separates. Once you got those separates, you got more channels. You can do your Atmos. Once you got those Atmos speakers, you got to make sure you put everything in the right place. And then from there, the cherry on top. But Room it's not tree. really the cherry on top. It's really the foundation that you build everything on. It, and I can't stress that enough. If you're not looking and thinking about room treatments, you've missed a significant step in your home theater build. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. And Giles, as always, it's a pleasure to do. He Absolutely. Can, he can Good times. Good stuff. Um, yeah, man, you're, you're the best co-host I've ever worked with and we're going to be doing this. And if you guys haven't seen, we did a podcast today on orb audio. So if you check that out on the power of sound, so we got a ton of stuff. You can see it all in the description below. Right on. Thanks Mike. Peace Thank out everybody. You. Thank you guys.